What's up guys, Tiggs there from Tiggs Tech Reviews. So today I've got my hands on the Intel Nook 12 Pro mini PC. Featuring a 12th gen Intel Core i5 processor running Windows 11 Professional and lots more. Well, this one is priced just over 850 pounds. So without a doubt, it's expensive. And you guys know already, we have to find out exactly what this mini PC is capable of and whether it's worth that 850. Now, first of all, inside the box, you will find a user manual. We've got a metal bracket, which will let you mount this mini PC to the back of your monitor. And it does come with a bag of screws. You're also getting an HDMI cable, power cable, power supply and this is a full laptop sized power supply and I'll give you a close-up of the voltage information and last but certainly not least the mini PC itself now let's just quickly run through the specs this box is powered by the Intel Core i5 1240p which is a 12 core processor clocked at 1.7 gigahertz base and a turbo of up to 4.2 gigahertz for graphics, we have the Intel Iris Xe. You've got 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM, 512 gigs of M.2 NVMe SSD. You've got 32 gigs of dual channel DDR4 RAM, and the RAM can be upgraded up to 64 gigs. Now for storage, we have a 512 gig M.2 NVMe SSD, and that can also be upgraded up to two terabytes max. There is also space to add a two and a half inch SATA hard drive and I'll show you all the upgrades a little bit later in the video. This mini PC comes with Wi-Fi 6 and a 2.5 gigabit per second Ethernet port. You've got Bluetooth 5.2. It comes pre-installed with Windows 11 Professional and it supports dual HDMI 4K at 60 Hertz. And there is also a cooling fan built in. Now closer look at the mini PC itself. So we've got an all black design. It's made from a combination of metal and plastic. The top part and the body is made completely from plastic. You've got metal mesh grill on either side and the bottom is also made from metal. Now on the front, these are actually USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. We've got a headphone and microphone combo jack, physical power button, nothing on this side. And on the back, we have a power socket, 4K HDMI output, 2.5 gigabit per second ethernet port. We've got a USB 3.2 port on top and just underneath it, we've got one USB 2 port and another 4K HDMI display output. If we keep going, there's a Kensington lock, some ventilation, and that brings us back to the front. And this is what the bottom of the box looks like. All right, just quickly check out the internals. Okay, so you loosen four screws, they don't come right out. And then you just lift the cover off, but be, be very careful because there is a ribbon cable um, connected to the board. So let's see what we're working with here. So just over here under the lid, you can see there is a SATA connection. So you can connect a two and a half inch SATA hard drive. Now if we have a look at the board, you can see we've got two sticks of RAM pre-installed. So these are crucial branded dual channel DDR4 RAM. And you can see we've got two sticks of 16 gigs of RAM giving us 32 gigs total. And on this side, you can see an Intel branded 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD drive. So you can swap that 512 out for a maximum of two terabytes. So those are basically your upgrade options. Let's put the lid back on. So without any further ado, I'm gonna get this mini PC all set up and we're gonna find out exactly how good the Intel Nook 12 really is. I'll be right back. First, I'm gonna show you how you can access the BIOS for this mini PC. So make sure the PC is completely off Keep the power button pressed for three seconds and then let go. And as you hear the PC boot up, keep pressing F2 and the BIOS page will appear. If you need to access boot menu options, just boot up whilst pressing F10. And here is a very quick look at the BIOS page. You can see we have a rather advanced looking UI. You can pause the video if I'm going too quickly. I'm simply going to skim through all the options and pages just to show you the capabilities and available settings. As no one really shows the BIOS pages in mini PC reviews, so this is something that I will start showing you guys going forward. As sometimes there are certain options in mini PCs that are just not compatible or even available. One example is the ability to enable things like Secure Boot, which is required to play certain games like FIFA 23, for example. So fortunately, this 
this mini PC does support secure boot, so you can easily enable that feature if you need it. So this is the full version of Windows 11 Professional, and I am currently connected to my new 4K capture card, and you can see the desktop resolution is set to 3840 by 2160. And as usual, you have all your pre-installed Windows apps, including the Windows App Store for your apps and games. Now let's check out these system properties. As you can see, it's Windows 11 Professional, with the 12th gen Intel Core i5 1240p. We've got 32 gigs of RAM, 64 bit OS, and it's already activated and ready to use. All right, let's have a quick look at the system storage info. C drive is 512 gigs, and from that 475 gigs are usable, and you can see exactly how much we have left after installing a number of games, emulators, and apps. The second drive you're seeing is my 64 gig flash drive, which contains all my 4K samples, which we're going to test right now. So let's play some 4K video samples from a USB drive using the default media player. And let's see how it performs. So first video, high bitrate 4K jellyfish demo. That's 160 megabits per second. And as you can see, it plays fine. I also tested the 180 megabits per second video, and that also played quite well. And the real test, 400 megabits per second, high bit rate, jellyfish demo, and you can see that is also playing nice and smooth. So next few files, 4K60 with HDR. So moving on to some video streaming on YouTube, and yes, it does support 4K60 on YouTube, and streaming quality and performance, as you can see, is great. So now I'm going to head over to settings and switch on HDR, just so we can test it out with YouTube to see how it plays back. So this is 4K60 with HDR on YouTube. Treat them as our brothers and sisters. Bobby didn't come home last night. I need for you to get out there ASAP if we have any chance of finding him alive. So next up, I loaded up Netflix from the web browser and I was able to stream a maximum of 1080p with HDR. And then when I switched off HDR from within PC settings, I was then able to stream 4K on Netflix. And I'm pleased to say Amazon Prime Video does support 4K with HDR. And finally, maximum streaming quality on Disney Plus was actually full HD. Is our legacy? No, Dad, it's yours. So moving on to some gaming, starting off with GTA 5, and here are the graphics settings. So resolution set to 1080p, 60Hz, VSync is off, and graphics set to normal. And as you can see, the game looks and plays very nice. We are achieving just over 50 frames per second average, with the TDP at around 37 watts. And until they launch GTA 6, I absolutely love playing this game. It never gets old. And just to see what happens, I switched the graphics up to high and kept the resolution to 1080p. And as you can see, we are now achieving 47 frames per second average with the TDP still at around 37 watts. With the aim to improve those frame rates a little bit further, I dropped the resolution down to 720p, keeping graphics on high. And of course, the frame rates are a lot better, achieving over 60 FPS with the TDP still peaking at 37 watts. All right, so now let's try something a bit more recent. Next game we're playing is WWE 2K22, and here are the graphic settings. So 1080p resolution, 60 hertz, V-Sync off, texture quality set to standard, and everything else set to medium. And we're achieving around 30 FPS, with the TDP peaking at 15 watts only, and you guys can see the game is absolutely struggling to play. It's literally in slow motion. Exactly what makes Umaga a frightening opponent. I'm sure we'll see his most bloodthirsty tactics in this one. Now the next game we're playing is FIFA 23, and I found that the best settings for this game on this mini PC is 720p resolution, no limit on FPS, dynamic resolution scale on, and rendering resolution set to low. 
This gives us a decent average of around 50 FPS. And yes, I know FIFA 23 does not look amazing at 720p, but nevertheless, I'm actually quite happy that at least I'm able to play this game on this mini PC. And a goal! That is a very bright start. Perfect way so next up we're moving on to some emulation and I'm using the Retro Station hard drive for this. Starting off with PS3 playing Grand Slam Tennis 2 using Vulcan backend and achieving around 25 frames per second with TDP going up to around 40 watts. The sound is a little bit choppy and the game slightly stutters so Grand Slam Tennis is only just playable. So next I'm testing another PS3 title, this is Tekken 6 and you can see we're achieving slightly better frame rates as this game is much easier to emulate, achieving 60 FPS with 35 watt TDP. Alright one more for good luck, playing God of War 2 achieving around 38 frames per second with a 40 watt TDP and you can see the game looks and plays pretty good. Jumping straight into the benchmarks, Geekbench single core score 1607 and multi core score we've achieved 9353. And in the Antutu benchmark test we achieved 748k and finally here is the CPU benchmark score by Passmark and you can see we've achieved just over 17,000. So let's see how this compares to the other mini PCs of this year. So here is my top performing mini PC chart for 2023, allowing you to see which mini PCs perform the best and also lets you compare the specs, features and the prices. And all the mini PCs you're seeing on this chart are ranked by overall benchmark scores. So as you can see, the Intel Nook 12 achieves position four on this chart with some pretty decent benchmark scores. Now you can view all the latest versions of my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure and completely free of charge. So there you have it guys, that was the Intel Nook 12 Pro. Specifications and performance are very good, you're getting ample connectivity and I love that you can upgrade the RAM and storage at a later stage and even add a 2.5 inch SATA to the mix. The mini PC is great for everyday use, including office applications, web browsing, playing AAA PC games at medium to low graphics. This thing can handle 4K video editing, desktop publishing, and lots more. Now Windows 11 Pro comes pre-installed and activated as standard, and I'm always happy to see some ports on the front for easy access. Unfortunately, you don't get any Type-C ports, but you do get three USB-A 3.1 Gen 2 ports, dual HDMI, and a super fast ethernet port. Now, even though I really did enjoy testing this mini PC and everything that it has to offer, I just can't believe it's priced a couple more hundred pounds more than the B-Link GTR6 and the Mini Forums UM690, as those two mini PCs are much more powerful with the Ryzen 9 performance. So not sure what they were thinking when they priced the Nook 12 Pro. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this one. If you got this already, let me know how you're getting on with it. And with all that being said, links will be in the description. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.